Hello everyone, welcome back to Yellow Card Vanguard. Today we've got a little bit more premium for you, and again it is about Zazan, but it's hopefully a little bit more interesting than your regular Zazan stuff. So over the last few weeks, you know, we've been doing a lot of testing, a lot of experimentation, and one of the decks that I has really stuck out to me that I really enjoyed is the Spike Brothers variant. And there's actually two Spike Brothers variants, so I'm going to talk about them both across separate videos. So there's one video here today and another will be coming along very soon. And I'm joined on both of them by the very Spikes expert himself, Living Proof. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Thank you for having me on. Uh, should I call you Ben? Yellow card? I don't think... Up to you. I'm good with all of them, man. All right. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Shout out to Ben for having me on. Uh, we have been going back and forth talking about some of the card techs and choices in both of the decks. And I'm excited to talk about it here for the video. Yeah. You know, thanks for joining us on this. And you know, thanks for working on these decks with me. So the first one we're going to be talking about today is the what I call the vanilla Agrius beatdown style of Zazan. So not much combos, just play vanillas, make them chunky, and then bash face. <clears throat> <laughs> so you know, like you got the standard things you expect to see. You've got your four uh, Tempest Spheres, four Zazans. You've got your triggers, and then pretty much everything else is a vanilla. So I'm going to have the deck list on the screen at this moment. So I'm not going to you know, go through the list. You guys can look at the list yourselves while we're talking. I just want to explain more about like some specific choices and some interactions and so on and so forth. So the first one I guess is the lineup of vanillas. Notably, the only grade 1 vanilla we have is a 9k vanilla without any shield value. Now the reason I went for this is because as you can look at the grade 2 lineup, all of the grade 2 vanillas are 10k vanillas with 10k shield. So from my point of view, we had enough defensive power across the grade 2s being able to swing for big numbers and then intercept away, so we didn't need to have the 15k shield grade 1. And actually having 9k boost uh, it means that if you don't have the 10k vanilla grade twos, you can have your 9k's boosting a 5k trigger, and it actually makes good numbers. Yeah, um, and also it makes four, it makes 14k if you um, pop off with Zazen into Cyclone early on, mm -hmm. with or at least with one of them. So being a 14k booster or beater is also very very useful in the early game in early game stages of, of Vanguard, and. It is cool to see like all the vanillas that were pre previously unused in Spikes finally finding a new purpose and finding a new lease on life. So <laughs> I'm yeah. thankful for that because they all, I do love some of the the designs on them. But they outside of um Deli Monty because he's always been a, a staple in the combo decks, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to see him come up as a four of as opposed to being like maybe a one of to be fetched if you really need it. Yeah. So like. The initial design of this deck was playing Jelly Beans, because Jelly Beans were able to fetch you with vanilla, which is really nuts in comparison, especially when you put together the Zazan. But we ended up cutting Jelly Beans, as you can see on the Grade 3 lineup, and just playing 8 Force Grade 3s. And the important thing is here is that all of them have a rearguard effect, which is really important because when you're bashing for like 20k, 30k with your Cyclone buffs, if you're putting a Grade 3 onto the board, it needs to have a really, really solid effect. So. We've got Bad End who gets the crit, and then Juggernaut who obviously is just 23k base, which is then boosted by, if you have a vanilla booster, it just makes it even stronger. And the reason we went for these over um, Bull Spike is pretty much because <clears throat> even though Bull Spike's great for giving you the tempo, he gives you the plus, you don't, I found that you didn't really need the plus, you just wanted to hit them harder. And so Bull Spike didn't really contribute to the hit them harder plan. He was just retire a rearguard and you know, draw a card, and that was... You didn't really need that when you were killing them. Right. Uh, Bull Spike <laughs> is really only useful if you're riding the grade three first to get benefit out of his his on miss ability. But if you're going second, then you really don't care because you're going to be striding most of the time. Mm -hmm. So it kind of came down to if you wanted a Vanguard that was good 50% of the time or you wanted something that was more useful nearly 100% of the time. So that's where you come back to playing just the good rear guard effects that also gain power if you fulfill their condition that you just keep beating your opponent over the head with extra buffs and extra power to go along with it. Yeah, for sure. And the other thing I want to talk about is there was a list, there was a variant of this list that I thought about putting together that played the Mowalk Barragan Superior Ride Engine. So obviously mm -hmm. to play the Mowalk you would cut the Dudley Montes because they're the weaker vanillas. Which of the two grade threes would you cut for the Barragirans? I'll probably cut um bad end because if you because let me think back a little bit or let me back up a little bit mm -hmm. with if if you already have tempest fear and you have agrius i think that's enough counter blasting like sent like having cars that use counter blast already where you don't need to have the bad end also kind of biting into that 
so you can kind of focus your counter blast into the tempest sphere and into your agrius and maybe if if things go that way into your your violence ace so just get the free power from juggernaut maximum and then cut out the bat end and roll with that yeah i think the important thing to note here as well is that this is pretty much the epitome of a brainless aggro deck like you don't care what you draw you're just putting cards on the table and turning them sideways which is you know, a very stark contrast to the Hellhard combo build that you know has been popular as of late. And I think that kind of reflects in like the G-Zone as well. You know, the fact that we have just four Agrius, you're probably not striding anything else because Agrius is a full field reset most of the time. You've got your Picaro because you know, he's just a free plus if you need it. And then you've got the Violence Ace who again like draws you the cards if you're really struggling. But I don't you know, I like I said, I don't see you striding anything other than the Agrius. And usually the game should be ending like, if the game gets to the point where you're striding Agrius, you should already be winning that turn anyway, is the idea. So, especially we've seen, like, you know, compared to OTT vanilla aggro, which plays zero shield, like, none of its units have any shield, or compared to, like, say, what's the other one? Aquaforce, where, again, like, only one of their vanillas has shield value. The fact that your grade 2s all have 10k shield means that you can actually reasonably guard like one or two attacks now and again in these vanilla mirror matchups. And I think that really makes a big difference in getting to that big angry stride turn. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, Monty only has 5k. He's a, he's a throwback to a, an older generation of yeah. spikes, which is unfortunate because even, but even then you still get enough shield out of the other two, the other two vanillas that I don't think Monty being a 5k is going to be a huge deterrent. And yeah. He's not, not going to live long enough to even matter, I would I would imagine. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't foresee you striding anything other than Agrius. Maybe if worse comes to worse, you can go into Picaro because you can Picaro a field that includes any extra um, Zazens and you might be able to get extra benefit out of that maybe. That would yeah. be kind of fun to see. But usually you're going to be just going in Agrius and trying to pop off with five attacks that are buffed by Cyclone. And I yeah. think that'll be enough to annoy somebody enough to, or beat them down enough to where the game's going to be over after, if not the first one, then definitely the second one. Exactly. Like, you know, one of the other really dumb things as well is that you can even first stride the Agrius and, like, uh, bounce your Zazan and get another Zazan effect in me afterwards to get the extra 5k pump onto your board. So yep. it's just, it just, it, no matter how you play it, it's just going to be a complete reset, which is really dumb. That's why I really like I this agree. deck. I agree. The one change that, I would probably make is the small little tech one grade one where you have Ted. Yeah. I would, I would probably make that a gyro slinger just mm -hmm. because you might be able to, if you say you're in a situation where you're missing Zazen on grade one or grade two, um, the gyro gives you a second swing at it and you might be able just to roll into Zazen. And that'll just get your engine going from there. But I do like Ted being able to return back um, units to your deck and just become a, just an 18 K beater out of nowhere which is also useful during your Agrius turn. So it all kind of comes down to what you're looking for in that tech one spot. If you just want the extra power from the Ted, or if you want to try and get your combo going with Zazen from Gyro Slinger, it's close. It can go either way there. Yeah, for sure. In fact, that's one of the things that we discussed like very early on when we were building decks. Like, you know, like I think one of the first lists I built had like four Gyro Slinger and four Spike Bouncer because it's just another way of finding the Zazen, which is really, really mm -hmm. dumb. But I think we ended up going. I, I ended up going with the Ted because you know you're competing with a vanilla that's getting boosted by Zaz by Cyclone as a booster. So Ted needs to like mm. match the number if nothing else. I think is the main reason. But yeah, like I said, it's really close. Can go either way. I think like I would I wouldn't disagree with Spike with uh, Gyroslinger being in that spot either for sure. Yeah, uh, I think that's the fun of deck building is trying to find those small little things that you enjoy or trying to get those little percentages to go your way than what you're going to be looking for i think that's the beauty of it yeah exactly so yeah that's you know kind of the deck as it is you know we've just explained like rather than the exact choices we've explained you know how the deck functions and like the interactions the pieces have i know that because it's a zazan deck and they're all vanilla there's not much interaction to be ha like there's no <laughs> synergy to be had but i hope like you know, talking about the shield values and talking about like you know the fact that you care like you don't care about getting to the stride turn because you have grade threes that do stuff all the time shows you like how it's different to maybe say the aqua force which is reliant on the odysseus combo or different to mm -hmm. ott which is reliant on the Calic combo for example mm -hmm. sometimes just good generic beats is what you need to win sometimes it's all you need yeah <laughs> for sure <laughs> 
All right, so that's that. So we're going to quickly switch now to a quick like little combo highlight where I'm going to show off like one or two lines of play. And yeah, that's going to be it. So we'll move to that right now. So like we mentioned in the video, this deck doesn't really have much combos because you're just playing vanillas and then beating their face in. So what I'm just going to highlight here is the quote unquote kill line of play to how to get the most damage output you can as effectively as possible. So it involves having a bad end dragon on the rear guard circle on the force marker because you need the force to give it the extra power, mainly because the vanillas will get enough power from the uh, cyclone themselves. The other line of play you could do is put a force 2 on the vanilla column because Baton Drag is really getting a crit. But then you've got two columns with crits, but the Baton Drag is actually not going to be that big relatively. And your Vanguard won't have a crit either unless you drive check one, so it's just a little bit less reliable. Plus, you theoretically shouldn't need crits because you've been rushing them down early, so they should already be on like 4 or 5 damage, assuming the game has gone correctly. So the line of play is to just attack with the vanilla column, which is going to be some number. Then you attack with a bad end dragon, who will use his effect to bottom deck one of your vanillas. We had a crit there because it's just what I pulled off the top, but you could also just bottom deck this if they're both like normal units, it doesn't really matter. So this column will be large. And then when you attack with the Agrius column, his effect will bind one, will flip one, so you bind your field. But now what you want to do is, rather than calling them all back, you want to call back the Zazan and then the Bad End Dragger, and then the Vanilla for the Bad End Dragger to boost, and then you can use Zazan's effect, Soul Blasting 1, and call two more Vanillas. You could even call over the Zazan to make a bigger boost, or let's say that you didn't have you didn't have a Grade 1 boost for the Bad End Dragger, then Zazan can give you that Grade 1 booster to make this column a little bit bigger. And then you've got your Drive Checks as per normal, and so you, you know, you've got this multiple crit attack that you can then reuse again as you so wish. So... The main thing about this deck is more knowing when to guard because you have a lot of grade 2s all with 10k shield so it gives you a lot of defensive power and it's just a case of leveraging your ability to actually guard some attacks so that you can get into this big stride turn. So that's been the deck profile. You know, once again, thank you for Living Proof for joining us and we'll have the Hell Hard 8 video for you up very very soon, look forward to that. And as always, be sure to check out our channel, check out our socials, and keep up to date with all the stuff that we're putting out. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.